Hi guys, how are you doing? Hope you are all well and safe and having a fab day. I've taken a trip down memory lane and uh, painted this picture of some uh, guys playing in a band, a live venue I went to see when you could actually go and see live music before the lockdown. It's one thing I'm missing a lot. Uh, I love live music. I love playing music, but it's just not happening right now. So I thought I'd um, get a bit nostalgic and paint this uh, picture of this band. I've, I wanted to capture the energy that these guys had, and I thought, let's do it in watercolour. So I painted this in Rebel. It took me just over an hour, start to finish. Let's have a look how I went about it. So here we are, I'm going to do a watercolour in Rebel and I've taken the decision to uh, speed up the whole of the sketch because it's really about the, the painting, you know, we, we've all, um, we, we've all got a sort of sketching style and you've seen me sketch loads of things and I just wanted to sort of speed the whole thing up uh, to keep the video at a reasonable length and then I'll be able to spend more time um, showing you the watercolour painting bits that um, are in real time. Uh, that's my plan anyway. Uh, I chose to do this because we've all been in lockdown quite a while now and I miss live music. In the UK um, we're not allowed to have live music uh, in bars or in enclosed spaces and I, I know the restriction now is they can have music outside but not in bars and I love that kind of intimate feeling that uh, you get when you go to a gig and this painting was done at one of my favorite venues called the cask bar in Loughborough if you ever uh, if you live around there and you haven't been to the cask bar pay a visit when they have got live bands on because it's a brilliant little place it's a bit punky um the, all the names of the beers are named after musicians like uh, blondie and uh, what did i have when i went oh uh, i had a lemmy pint of lemmy from uh Mot motorhead so you don't know what you're getting really if you don't ask what the beer is they've just got these uh names of uh bands which is really really good the people that run the place uh, and own it really lively uh, guys they're all musicians so they all play they're really committed to music it's a brilliant venue and i miss it so much because i love uh, live music and this was a photo i took at the last time i went there before the lockdown well actually i played there in a band after this after i saw this band there um just a couple of weeks before literally a couple of weeks before the lockdown i was playing double bass uh, like this guy here so um that was a lot of fun but this was the last band i saw there and they were sort of a, a rockabilly stroke punk band really good fun uh so i thought it'd be nice to just see if i could capture the um energy that those guys had got in a watercolor it's not the most obvious medium um, to do this kind of painting you see there I put that base player on a separate layer so I could move move him about a bit you notice I've uh, closed up the space between the singer and the bass player I've left out the guitarist on the left so I've just got the drummer the bass player I'm just sort of tweaking things there and I've done a sort of shaded sketch just to give me an idea where I'm going with the colour, because I'm going to have lots of darks in this and lots of bright primary colours. We see all those oranges and reds in there. So I want that to uh, be really vibrant. So that's the sketch done. That was nice and easy. It took me about 20 minutes, I think. So I lock that layer, create a new layer. Um, I think I put the pencil layer i'll leave the pencil layer don't leave it on the bottom i think i do it's locked anyway and i'm straight into the watercolors now and i am going to use the mop 
brush initially to get on some uh, strong color and initially I'm a little bit timid you can see I'm sort of picking not too vibrant a color just sort of playing around thinking oops I, I, I keep pressing the um, shift key to resize the brush uh, with the square bracket because that's what you do in art rage to do it a bit quicker and it pulls out that uh, sort of straight edge tool which um, foxes me every time so I'm just sort of putting in some background colors and I'm being a bit sort of um, scared with the with the color that I'm using at the minute it's not a, um, a bright vibrant color it's not where I'm going to go eventually and you'll see that I am um, overlapping the colors onto the figures that doesn't really worry me too much because the light would sort of um, cast uh, colors onto the figures so I'm straight in now with the dark and I love the way it's sort of diffusing and bleeding out this is all with a mop brush default settings at the minute I haven't added any extra water or anything like that and I kind of want the guys to blend in with the background where they merge so you parts of the body you can clearly define and other bits are just um, lost in the shadows especially that double base I want that to get lost in the shadows so I'm deliberately overlapping pencil work with the uh, colors that I'm putting on there I'm doing this um, where I'm, I'm using my Cintiq Wacom Cintiq touch screen as a, um, an Intuos Pro again I'm, far, I'm really enjoying working on the bigger screen and seeing a, an image which is much more similar to the actual finished print size than working on the Cintiq 16 I'm going to have to save up and get a bigger monitor I'm thinking I need that's a 16 I mean I would love a 32 inch oh 32 inch Cintiq would be awesome but that's just you know I can't justify that really um, so I'll probably 26 inch that sounds quite nice doesn't it and it's affordable price something like that might be really really nice but anyway that's for the future at the minute i'm enjoying doing what i'm doing also like being able to see the old screen and not have my hand obscuring what i'm painting so uh, that's really nice as well back to the painting still on that mop brush and putting some purples in there and letting the colors overlap and blend and bleed just wondering about the drum I kind of want you to see the the bass drum um, but I don't want it to be bright white so at the minute I'm just sort of jumping all over the place ah now I'm sort of thinking I need to do a little bit of detail so just still using the mop change the size of the brush so I can sort of just get a little bit of detail in there and I want this base to be um, a lot of dark on it and just hints of light um, reflecting off that sort of deep red wood of the double base so that's something I'm going to be working on still on uh, one layer and it's I think I've well I, I I don't think I know I've put the pencil layer on the top because uh, very quickly once I started um, letting the color overlap onto the drawing I just couldn't see the drawing at all and it was like it wasn't there so I had to move that onto the top layer uh, that was quite an important uh, move that I did quite early on now this guy's got a denim jacket on and I kind of want to get that in there I don't want it sort of bouncing bright blue vibrant I, I just so I put a sort of a bright blue on and then 
muted it back with some uh, of that darker blue. And I want the bass to just sort of mingle in with his arm and his clothes. So, you, I mean, it's like on the photo, you can't see where the bass finishes and the arm begins. Uh, and uh, I really like, that's what I think attracted me to this photo was was the shapes that uh, um, that make up the figures, the sort of lights and the darks make this attractive pattern over the whole of the photograph. Uh, so you, there's some, it's probably a really bad photograph because, you know, if you're into photographer, they always say preserve your darks and your highlights so you can see, you know, you don't want everything blocked out. That's not very arty though, is it? You know, I like to um, look at things differently. So I like the fact that all of that uh, dark is hiding things for your for you to fill in with your imagination really that's the old point so that's what's going off here and what i'm trying to do i suppose is capture the energy that this band have got they were bouncing all over the place they were really lively playing sort of rockabilly music uh, with a sort of punky feel to it really really good dead lively loads of beer flowing everybody having a great time I remember those days uh, with fond fondness, really, when we used to go out and mingle with other people. <sighs> Can't wait for that to happen again. Uh, so I want to get that energy, try and get that energy in this watercolor. And like I say, watercolor is not probably the most obvious medium you would choose to uh, do that. Although it is a very fast medium, I suppose when you're painting so maybe it's not such a, a crazy idea and I wanted to use rebel because I wanted all this diffused light I thought that would if I was using say critter I'd have to spend a lot of time blending edges and uh, softening edges whereas with rebel I don't have to do that. I just put the color on one brush stroke and um, keep it really, it'll just keep it really, really fresh because I'm not sort of concentrating on the technique of having to sort of um, blend colors together. The software does it all for you, just like using real paint, really. So that's definitely um, the right app for this project. As you can uh, probably see by now, I'm not really worried about getting a likeness of these guys. I just want to capture the moment. So I'm not looking to paint detail in the faces, detail in their hands or anything like that. It's all quite abstract really. And I'm more, to be honest with you, I was more interested in the shape of the double bass, uh, maybe because I played the double bass and, and getting that looking something half decent than uh, all the work that I'm gonna have to put into the face and I'm also but I'm also um, really interested as I said earlier with the lights and the darks and you're gonna see me painting lots of um, dark shapes around the figures uh, to sort of make them really pop because at the minute the uh, the singer is sort of disapp he's disappeared his body's like invisible and his top off his shoulders and his head they're kind of um quite flat really they need uh picking out and you can see i'm starting to do that now on the uh bass player i'm just sort of doing a little bit of uh dark color around his head and that will just really make that head stand out except i kind of chopped too much off there look and um, give him a little bit of a, a pin head which isn't uh, too good to be honest so i have to go back a little bit undo that and uh, try again basically it was just because the paint was sort of flowing out I use the mop a lot for this, uh, but I do, I think the only other brush I use, well, no, I use two brushes. I use, I know I use the filbert brush a little bit. 
and then a little bit later on I go in with the flat brush as well but the, my, my favourite brush without a doubt for this was the mop brush and I could have probably done the old thing with the mop um, if I'd have wanted but hey they've got all these other brushes you might as well try and use them here I'm, I'm sort of I want to get um, an indication of the, the features on the face I think that's what I was um, trying there So I, at this point, I'm, I'm going in with another layer. And I do want to sort of get a little bit more detail in the faces, but not... When I say detail, I mean like, so you, you can see where the eye uh, brows are, or, or the um, forehead, if you like, and the shadows of the, the eyes that the eyes create. I still, I'm not wanting to get it to look like anybody anyway back to the double base that's what it's really all about uh, I think I've, I've swapped to the filbert brush here because I, I just wanted to um, get a little bit more detail in and the mop uh, wasn't working for me it could have done if they kept resizing it but i thought you know what they've got brushes designed for doing the detail let's use them so that's why i was um i, I swapped the brush and then you notice i've changed the color slightly because i want to get that kind of rosewood uh warm is it rosewood walnut color i don't know what the double base is well my double base is black um so that would have been easy but this is a, a natural colored one here we are look this is what i was talking about um just making those figures pop out of the background by putting that um dark color around them so i used the filbert brush to trace the shape around it and then i've swapped to the mop to um, fill it in and don't worry it's all looking a bit black and a bit dark but i'm going to put some more color over the top of that and i think straight away that looks way better um the guy even though the guy is sort of disappearing into the shadow which is what i want really i suppose at the end of the day perhaps not as much as it is there it doesn't look quite as bad paying a little bit of attention to the drummer there So just sculpting around that arm a little bit. You can see that there's, I need to go around his other hand. That's sort of all a bit loose yet. And his, his leg, his left leg, not as you look at it, but his actual left leg um, looks a bit odd because it's got that kind of light blue uh, shade on it, which needs uh, sorting out. So I'm pleased with how it's coming on. Uh, I, at this point, um, I didn't know how much more work I was going to put into it. I actually spent quite a bit longer, uh, more time on it than I thought I was going to do. But um, I just got into it. I really got into this one. I, I, I really enjoyed messing around with the, the watercolours in Rebel and letting them do their own thing and flowing out to a certain extent i didn't have loads of water where it was all running down the page and everything i, I sort of avoided that because uh, that's how i paint in watercolor i don't normally um tr aim to get sort of paint running down the page there we are i'm just softening off that, those dark colors now that is the you see you cannot do that with real watercolor you can't um what i'm doing here look i sort of just add in color over those dark colors you wouldn't be able to do that in watercolor you once you um got that dark on that's it you you're done unless you wash it or put it under the tap 
and wash it all off and just sort of lift the colour out with a brush. I've done that before uh, a lot, but uh, you'd have to sort of pretty much start painting again. So you can't do that kind of um, overlaying of colours like you can here, which um, I'm not knocking it. I, I really like it because it makes life a hell of a lot easier. A hell of a lot easier. I felt that I wanted some more... Um, stronger colors in there so i've gone in with that bright red now i think that stroke i just put in there that that dark blue that pulled his leg around into the um the sink the singer's leg round into the uh underneath the drum to the bass was quite crucial it pulled the whole thing together for me for me that was really important and now i'm just putting sort of a bit of a bat light on his shirt just to um, give that a bit more definition because you can see it in the photo and I felt that it did need it did need that because that adds a little bit of movement I felt uh, so that's what where I'm going with that I'm always amazed when I um, watch these videos back uh how i've um gone about it and th things that i would do different that's i'm painting the the uh snare drum in now and uh i put in this really crude big stroke so i just put in a lot more smaller cruder strokes instead for for that snare and um leave it at that perhaps just sort of re refine that circle a little bit i don't they've got a mic in front of the double bait uh, in front of the uh, bass drum i don't bother with that i i just felt that that's detail that doesn't need to to be added i i felt there's enough going off without um putting that mic in there but i did want a little bit of color on it like you see i've just sort of put there and it all blends away so you don't get that perfect circle i didn't want it to be too perfect And the feet, I didn't ever get around to painting the feet. They are, what you're looking at now, is pretty much finished. And that was a conscious decision. I just really like the way they look. I like the way they sort of just hang out at the bottom of the painting and um, just sort of gives um, a transition from the sketch to the paint which I, I really, really like. I'm glad I've done that with that leg. That was, was bugging me quite a lot. So there's still a fair bit of painting left to do. There's uh, about 10 more minutes. And I decided that the, um, I needed a bit more colour on the figures on the arms on the faces they all look a little bit flat compared to all of that vibrant color that's going off around them so um, i start to concentrate on the figures and the color that i want to eventually um, get them look as though they're under the spotlights and they've got lots of light shining on them and the lights are moving around and uh, casting different colours on them. So, and I was also sort of preoccupied with this um, bass player's face, probably more than I should have been really. I'm looking at that now and I think, that's all right, that, that would have probably done. And uh, I ended up zooming in on it and... Um, going to a, a filbert brush and trying to um, define some of the features a little bit more uh, and I, I just want I, I, I really like that now I just wondered if I was um, got a little bit over or well, maybe not though because once the paint starts to flow does look a little bit odd 
perhaps. So at this point, I think it, it was at this point that that I was saying earlier, I was taking advantage of the way the paint flows to make really rapid brush strokes to get in the background and everything. Then it became an issue when I was trying to do the detail because I didn't want it to do that. And um, I was being lazy and wasn't really um, concentrating on the brushes and not so much, you know, picking the right brush, but you need to um, concentrate on the amount of paint you've got loaded onto that brush and how much water you're using. And you do need to, here we go. So I'll sort of zoom in now. And you do need to think about the level, the quantity of water that you have in your brush. And you can see, uh, I'll just take the size down and I'll paint this in. And watch what happens when I take the brush off. Look at the paint flowing. So, you, so that was uh, the issue I'd got. And I tried that a few times. So I go to the filbert brush, look, watch. Same problem. So then I thought, hang on a minute, I've got too much water in here. Let's just take that water down a little bit. And then I'll, there you see, it stays exactly where I want it. Just a matter of actually putting the paint in the right place now. So you do need to, you've got to use the sliders. So, some apps, you, you pick a brush and you never ever touch the, the sliders to adjust the quantity of paint and stuff like that. But I have to say, in Rebel, you do. You've got, to, you've got to be aware of what you're using. So there we go. I'm starting to get something that um, I'm happy with. I then decide that I need to see his ear a little bit, just a little bit of his neck. There we go. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe what about his hand? Should I be doing that? Am I getting a bit too much detail? Am I over thinking it now? There we go. And then I use a little bit of white. Now, traditionally, if you're doing this, you'd be using gouache, white gouache to get this on. So at this point, it no longer becomes um, a watercolour in the strictest sense. Uh, not if you're a purist, because you should be using the white of the paper. But I needed that white. I just wanted to pop a little bit of white on for the strings. And then I start thinking, right, okay, the bridge. We need to um, think about the bridge of that base. Let's put that in as well. You can see it clearly on the photo. That's the horizontal bit that the strings are sitting on. So I need to get that in there. There we go. So now I'm thinking, yeah, it's looking, it's looking all right. We're getting it to look like a double base. I just want that line perhaps a bit more horizontal. There we go. Lovely. So what about the, the lead singer? He's looking a bit boring, isn't he? It, we need we need to think about some colour on his face. So I'm just picking up colours off the canvas now. So sort of hopping around. Oh, now I'm going in, not doing his face yet. I'm doing the um, a symbol. I think I'll probably just merge that in with his shirt. Perhaps I don't know. I've got no idea what I'm doing what I'm doing here and no idea at all I'm 
Not so sure I, I had any idea when I was actually uh, painting it either. Oh, I fl just switched to the flat brush as well. And this sort of puts sort of... Um, you can see the brush strokes in with this. So I just sort of go over and put in a few little strokes here and there that just add a little bit of sort of sharpness to the image. It just takes away some of that softness in the odd place. I'm obviously saving the, the singer till last. There you go. Now I've zoomed in, you can see, well, you didn't get very long to look, but you could see um, those brush strokes of that flat brush. Here we go. So now let's, let's, Make him look like he's screaming his head off and bursting blood vessels. Oh, he looks like he's got an orange mask on to help him combat COVID-19. So these colours look a little bit radical at the minute, but I think... It all comes together. We'll pop, pop in a little bit of purple in there. In the sort of shadowy areas. So instead of using um, a dark blue or a, a dark skin tone, I'm using purple to, to get those sort of shadows underneath. Uh, in the shaded areas. A little bit on the bass player. So just pick up a little bit of red and um, apply that to the face a little bit. Undo it because it's obviously a bit too much. It was in the wrong place, I think. It, it still looks a bit, it all looks a little bit too much at the minute. It, it does need sort of um knocking back we need a sort of a, a, a little bit of a skin tone probably just putting on there somewhere now i've i like that i like the joy line but i've done two strokes so you see i undid those and then put um another one in instead so we've got this shadow under the jaw which really makes his head look as though he's sort of singing up towards the ceiling. Really happy with that little bit. His mic stand seems to have disappeared entirely. There we go. So I'm thinking I need a, a sort of a skin tone. I'm not quite happy with the shape of the arm. If I remember rightly, I, I actually go back into the sketch layer and take an eraser and rub out a line. Yeah, I'm doing that now. You can see I'm uh, unlocking that uh, pencil layer and just taking out the pencil line, which I, I felt was in the wrong place. And it was stopping me um, getting the right proportions for his arm. So that needed to be done. Lock the layer again, then go back onto the painting layer, which is unusual for me because normally I uh, forget and totally get it wrong. So his arm on his, his right arm, left as you're looking at it now, looks as though it needs something just to make it pop a bit. It's, it's, Looks a little bit flat over that side, so I'm going to have to do something about that. So I'm going to be needing to pick up the dark blue at some point. Looks like I'm going for that now. 
back to the mop because I know I want to be doing some uh, large areas of, of colour. Where am I going to go though? That's the thing. Oh, brave Steve, brave. Yeah, I like that. I like what's going off there. But I'm still looking at that arm and thinking, I hope I do something with that. Looks like I'm going, I'm going, yeah, there we go. That's it. It just, just throws him forward a little bit and adds a, a real sense of um, dimension and form to the old thing. And then I can sort of add a little bit of brighter colour over there. You can see I'm not I've not paid much attention to the drummer at all. I just felt these two guys at the front because as I remember it as I was watching the gig, those were the two that I was watching. I was watching the bass player and the singer. I didn't watch the lead guitarist too much. Probably concentrate on the bass player because I play bass and I want to see what he's doing. Uh, but that's what um, what I was concentrated on. And so that's, I, I guess, why I focused on that uh, with the painting. So I, just adding, really going for it, adding final little bits of uh, colour here and there, just to set the scene. Really pleased with this. I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, it re really took me about an hour. We've got uh, the videos 36 minutes long, but I've speeded up the drawing a lot. So I spent a, about another 25 minutes on the drawing. So it's probably just over an hour. Not much over though, maybe a minute or two uh, from start to finish. So there we go. Live music in the Caspar in Loughborough. If you ever get a chance to go, pop in uh, it's no good saying Steve sent you uh, uh, because they won't know who I am really but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have a big thumbs up as always it is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing I have loads of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you and don't forget everybody stay safe stay sane and keep painting bye